Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. My name is Mama Sancha, a.k.a. Mama Shaina, a.k.a. Mama Wengi, a.k.a. Mama Sharon, very important, I've been warned. Amen. But my name is Janet Mwangozi, and I bless the Lord for this opportunity. I welcome every one of us. Welcome, karibu sana, karibu sana. To our first timers, welcome, 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 Kabisa. We love you. We love you so much with the beautiful love of Christ. It's so much. It is so much because we can't contain it. So we just have to love and love and love. Amen. So we love you. And everybody else, thank you for joining us who have made it here uh, in person. Thank you for all those who are joining us at home, in their workplaces, in their wherever you are. We love you so much. And uh, let us... Um, Give a mighty shout, even as we welcome our pastor, Nicholas Mwanguzi, to come and give us the word. We know that we will be word-fed. Amen. Amen. Let's give a mighty clap unto God for him. Amen, amen, and amen. Mutamani pole pole. Especially you, my young people. Thank you, sweetheart. Uh, Edwin is not with us. He's unwell. So I want us to declare that he experiences the divine health that is indeed at work in him in Jesus name. Father we thank you for Edwin and we know that health is his portion in the name of Jesus so we speak to that body every part of him that is seemingly unwell we speak the life which is of God and that that life causes him to experience wellness now in Jesus name. Amen. First John chapter 10, verse 27. First John chapter 10, verse 27. Um, The word says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Praise the Lord. Let me read again. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone, sorry, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hands. One of the greatest fears of humans is death. I mean physical death. How many of us want to disappear now out of the world or out of the earth? Anyone? No, you know what? 
It's because you have plans for life. You have plans made for how you want things to be, how you want uh, to live your life. And so you have a plan well wrote out. And now because of that, you don't want to leave the world. You don't want to leave the earth before time or before you've accomplished those things. But unfortunately for many people, when they still have plans to accomplish, they quit. Due to circumstances, those circumstances they may not control by themselves. But this is something that Jesus says. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. There is something that keeps one from perishing. There is something that keeps an individual from being extinct. And that is eternal life. Now when we know that it is eternal life, then we cease to call it something. Because we know that eternal life is Christ Jesus, indeed the knowledge which is of God. So he says, and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. We are continuing with our study on the man, our savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, like we did in first service today, we shall see uh, continuing still that we are eternally preserved in Christ. So for those of you that love writing subheadings, you can write and say, eternally preserved in Christ. And that is the testimony for you that you are eternally preserved in Christ. Never any at any one time being without protection. That at no time will you be without provision. That at no time will you feel vulnerable. Of course the mind might feed you with vulnerability but you are not vulnerable. Why? Because for as long as he is you are preserved. Amen. So he says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. What is eternal life? That they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That is what Jesus says in John 17 verse 3. That eternal life is that they may know you, God. He was speaking to his father in prayer. And the only son whom you have sent. Knowing him is coming to him or being brought to him. So when you received him as your Lord and Savior, you received eternal life. And later on we shall see it that as many as received him, he gave the power to become the children of God. So you received eternal life because you received him. Now going back to chapter 10, he says, they shall never perish. Why? Because he has given them eternal life. Friends, anyone that has eternal life is anyone that lives eternally. What does it mean? You cannot perish because you have him that gives eternal life. And because he gives eternal life and he has given you that eternal life, that eternal life is your preservation from perishing. Friends, the Lord has loved you so much that he has counted that you will not perish. Neither will you be extinct because he loves you. Praise the Lord. So he says, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Then it means this eternal life is so gluesome. G-L-U-E, some. Meaning, once he has held you with his eternal life, no matter what the enemy might try, Hapo hautoki. Why? Because the hand that has held you is a hand so strong that no matter what man tries, man cannot take you away. Friends, stop thinking that you are perishing because you are not. Stop thinking that you are fallen because you have not. Stop thinking that you are failing because you are not. As a matter of fact, you believed unto eternal life, and because you believe that eternal life, then you have eternally whatever it is that God gives. And today we are going to see how this man, our Savior, Jesus Christ, preserves us eternally. We know that salvation is indeed deliverance, 
is indeed safety and indeed preservation. So we want to see in this package of salvation that the man, our Savior Jesus Christ gives, how does he preserve us forever, everlastingly? We know that what he gives is everlasting. When he has given life, he has given everlasting life. So let's start from the book of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, and we shall start from verse 1. This is what scripture says. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. He says, if then you were raised with Christ, he, he's awakening your mind to the fact that indeed you were. Because a believer is him that has been raised with Christ. He explains that in chapter 2 before he reaches chapter 3. So you can go back and read chapter 2 or rather study because reading you may forget but if you're studying then you will understand. If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. For those of you that were here in first service, I told you that above is not a place. So when you lift up your hand, is it? Oh, your eyes, you're not lifting them up to where God lives. Amen? There is a place for that. Figuratively and analogically. But above is not a place. Above is a dimension. An understanding. An awakening to a matter. So he says, if then you were raised with Christ, comma, so that you may take time to understand it that indeed you being born again is because you were raised with Christ. Then he says, seek those things which are above. I told you that that seeking is not that you are going to be looking for because it is not seen. No. Let us try to investigate a few things. Back to verse, verse 1. He says, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So where is Christ located? Above. Where? At the right hand of God. But we know that whoever is in Christ Jesus, that person is a new creature. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. How many of us are in Christ? How many of us are new creatures? Now, understand that. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ. So you believe and you know that you are in Christ. Meaning, if they open Christ Jesus up, they will find you right there. Right? Now, let us go back to Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. He says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is. So, where is Christ found? Above, right? Where are you found? In Christ first. You are found in Christ. Therefore, where are you found? So when you are to seek, you just look around and right there is what you are seeking for. Because you are searching right there. Amen? For those of you that love your phones so much, you love them so much that even your bedside table is there. Number one purpose is that your phone might be there. Just by turning like this, that phone is there. Indeed, you are searching, but you know where it is. And so, you, you, you are searching, but you are not searching. Because you know it is there. This is what he's telling you. That seek those things. Right there, because they are there. That seeking involves putting honest attention to those things. Praise the Lord. With your heart, you put your heart there. Those things which are above where Christ is. And yet, he has told you that you are in Christ. So you look into Christ where you are found and then you find right there. He says, sitting at the right hand of God. It means you are also right there. Verse 2. 
Set your mind on things that are above, not on things on the earth. Why? Because that is where your location is. First, that is where Christ Jesus is found. But remember, you are found right there in Christ Jesus. So because Christ, because you are found in Christ and Christ is found there, then you also are found there. So because you are found there in that realm, in that dimension, set your mind on that dimension. Not on the things that the pressures of the world are bringing. This is more than just closing your eyes and say, I'm setting my mind on the things above. And then you close your, 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 your eyes. Unakunja uso mbaya sana. And then five minutes later you say, yes. I have set my, no, we don't set our minds like that. We set our minds by the study of the word like I am doing now. Like you also are doing now. Praise the Lord. So you set your mind on the things above, not on the things of on the earth. Why should you do that? Next verse. Because you died. So it is death that caused you to be above. Because you are only able to be alive with Jesus because you died with him. When he was dying, it was just you on his mind. Hallelujah. So the reason why you can be able to set your mind on the things above is because you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Beloved, I want you to be assured that the life now that you have is under custody of someone more powerful than anything that men can ever think about. So, for anyone to reach you with harm, for anyone to reach you with trouble, first they should reach him where you are hidden. That is why when you are in your house and thieves or robbers or murderers want to come and they do anything bad, not you of course, the people that you've had, first they have to break the house that contains them. Because if they don't break the house, they won't be able to reach them. Now you are hidden. He says, your life is hidden. Meaning anyone that wants to touch your life, first let them deal with the person that is hiding you. Let them deal with the person that is enclosing you. That is why people build very strong stone houses. So that any thief that may want to come, first of all, let them deal with the stones. Amen? And now you are hidden in Christ Jesus. So it means anyone that wants to touch your life or anything that wants to touch your life, it must deal with him that, uh, that has hidden you. So he says, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That is your preservation. Praise the Lord. That word hidden, you can substitute it and say, preserved with Christ. So right there where Christ is, is where you are found. And so your life is safe because you are found right there. Praise the Lord. I was telling those in first service that we used to play games uh, when we were still young, those games of hide and seek, where one person remains back and they are calling, are you done hiding? And then you guys say, either you are done or not. Then anakuja kitafuta moja kwa moja. When they find you, you come back. Now, the ones when you are mepatikana wa kwanza, they will make sure you that is remaining in hiding, you are not found. So it is their responsibility to tell you where the enemy is. The enemy, in this case, the person looking for you. So they will tell you, ah, baki, 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 kidogo, mm -hmm. kuja sasa, enda pale jificha na hapo. You think you are doing the work of hiding, but they are the ones reading the map. So in any case, you are moving because they have spoken. They are the ones hiding you. Now, read verse 3 really well. It says, your life is hidden. Note that you have hidden your life. So it is not you that has done the duty of hiding your life. That hiding has been done by someone else. So it means your safety while you are hiding is that person's responsibility. Are we understanding this, saints? Because your life has been hidden, 
Not because you have hidden your life, because if it was you that had hidden your life, then you would have a responsibility of kuchungulia. Uone kama wame kufikia. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But because it is the other person that has hidden you that is responsible, then they will tell you, okay, now come this side. Now go this side. Now that is the same thing that happens even with our Jesus to us. Friends, he has hidden you. Then that he will direct you. Then that he will tell you it is safe to do this. Then that he will tell you now you can be here. Why? Because it is his responsibility. The one that has hidden you. You have not hidden yourself. Say, I am hidden. I have not hidden myself. Praise the Lord. Now, because your life is hidden with Christ in God, eh, there are things that are obviously meant to happen. Number one, nothing can touch you. Because if it tries to touch you, it will touch Christ. It will touch God. Praise the Lord. It will touch God, not you. Because you are hidden in Christ Jesus. That is your protection. Nothing can reach you to bring harm. Nothing can, bring, can reach you to bring issues, whatever it is. Trouble, let the troubles come onto Jesus and back. That is how preserved and protected you are eternally. Not just for a few minutes, not just for a few moments. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, because your life is hidden with Christ in God, then it means you are not at any one time to feel like you have left the presence of God. Are we together, saints? That is what scripture has said from verse 1 to verse 3. That is why in verse 2 he has told you, seek those things which are above. Because many times men have a beggarly element of thinking that they have less of God and so they need to work hard for more of God. He came to you fully, 100%. Just because you've not understood it doesn't mean it is not true. Amen? Just because you do not know something doesn't mean that something is not true. It is just because it is not registered in your mind. Praise the Lord. The moment it registers in your mind and you are aware of it, so, because you are said that your life is hidden with Christ in God, meaning you are Ever, ever present with God. Ever in God. Ever there. So it means statements like Bwana twa jambele zako ama tumekuja mbele zako are invalid. Because if you are always in God, then how can you come to him in whom you are already? If you came to Christ, you are there forever. Hidden. Now you can say, you know, he can take me. He has said in verse 28, John 10, where we've started from, that you will not be snatched from his hand. Meaning, don't think that because of your shortcomings, you have left and then you're going to work towards going back again. No. That is what we mean when we speak of eternal preservation in Christ Jesus. Then it means you, are no, you no longer come into the presence of God. When you came here for fellowship on Sunday, like now, you have not necessarily come into the presence of God. I am use, adding the word necessarily. You have not necessarily come into the presence of God. Not to say that, that God is not present here. No, God is present. Evidently so. But even when you were at home, you were in the presence of God. Even when you were at work, you were in the presence of God. Even when you were with your friends, you were in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. What you have come here to do is to share in that presence together with fellow believers. What you have come to do is to continue to grow in the knowledge of that presence together with fellow believers. And it is very important. 
So just because you are in the presence of God at all times doesn't mean that now you should forsake the gathering together as is the manner of some. We've been warned in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 that do not forsake the gathering together as is the manner of some. You do well to gather. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you do well to gather. Keep it up. You know, many times you, you rarely encourage each other. You rarely appreciate each other. It is good. Especially in these, in these times. Eh? So you no longer come into the presence of God because you are there. Otherwise then his preservation would not be complete. But because his preservation is complete, you are always in his presence. And so you no longer come before God. You no longer come before God. So songs like that is why we sing that song here severally but jutunajua tukondani mwake that is how we sing it. Hatukuji tena tulisha fika. We are already there. So mlokole usiseme tena ya kwamba unakuja mbele zake bwana. Unless wewe haujaokoka. Lakini kama umeokoka, uko ndani yake. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hapo ndipo wewe unapatikana. Amen. Sio nje tena, hautoki. Na si kupenda kwako, ni kupenda kwake yeye. Amen. Jua amekupenda, amekufanya in a way that hautatoka. There's a song that I love singing with Madame Investor. In that song, those people say, come what may, I have made up my mind. And so, God made up his mind that you will always be found in him. So, he looks at you and is like, why are you telling me you're coming before me? You've always been there. You are always found in the inside of me. Praise the Lord. And so, be persuaded of the fact that you are in him at all times, in every situation, no matter the challenge, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Now, of course, there are things that happen because you are in him. Let us look at a few of them. It is in him that because of the preservation that he gives you, you have divine health. Say, I have divine health. One more time, say, I have divine health. Now, it's also important for men to go ahead and understand what divine health is. Eh? But let's see 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. Scripture says, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, that who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. It is in him that there is healing. Praise the Lord. It is in Christ Jesus that there is health and indeed perfect health for you. Praise the Lord. Why? Because his desire and his work preserves you eternally, even in Christ. Never will you feel like, oh, okay, the feelings might come, but never will it be a reality that, we are with, that you are without preservation. Amen. Now, because you are found in him, eh, it is re his responsibility to supply. Praise God. So many people struggle with how to live productive in life, how to live pleasing to God. But I want to tell you, saints, that God is your abundance in supply. Amen. So, because you are hidden, it is his responsibility to supply for you. Amen? You know, when people are go into asylum, no, not asylum, asylum is different. When people are taken in as refugees, they are hidden from oppression in the place where they have been, right? Now, the country that hosts them, the country that 
takes them in to protect them and to hide them from the people that were oppressing them, that, play, that country has a responsibility for the shelter of those people, for the food of those people, for the education of those people, for the health care of those people. All they need to do is to appear there with their refugee card. Let me tell you something that might lakini nyinyi amnanga wivu. Sema mimi sinanga wivu. There are some that are in this country. And you will find that many of them are living 10 times better life than you. You struggle with rent. They have three bedrooms. Well paid. Si mtoto ataenda aje shule. Hakuna watoto watano. Wote wanaenda shule. Tena shule mzuri. Now I'm telling you this not to make you feel bad in any way. But I'm telling you this to see how if you are the hidden one. It is not your responsibility how things will go. But it is the responsibility of the one who has hidden you. If men could only understand that they are hidden with Christ in God. Hidden by God. Then they would in all things look up to him. And say I know you are my supply. He supplies you wisdom. The wisdom with which you make wealth. Praise the Lord. Now take that statement as very important. He supplies you with wisdom, the wisdom with which you make wealth. He supplies you with knowledge, the knowledge with which you are able to make decisions. He supplies you with understanding, the understanding that causes you to be better, even in a relationship with men. So focus on the word, amen. So one, we have said he has given you divine health. He has supplied for you supernaturally. So you can reach a point and be like, I don't know how he has done this, but indeed he has done it. There's something that we kept telling uh, our family back at home, at home here, eh? at our house. We kept telling ourselves that towards the end of December and the first days in January. And so as the month was ending, tulitamani sana tufanye venye tulikuwa tumesema. Lakini mungu ni nani? Alikuwa ashatu shangaza. To the extent that the things that we had expected, because he's our supplier, he alone knows how to take us through. So I pray that you, with that understanding, you'll also reach a point and be like, hey, I had thought by this time it would be like this, but he remains to be God. So receive his supply of wisdom to make wealth. Receive his supply of strength that you will be strong in everything. And may you receive supernatural honor among your peers, among your bosses, among your friends, among your family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And as well, he gives you that divine preservation, which we are speaking about right now. I was giving those in first service an example of a coconut. I mean, and I was asking them that have eaten that have eaten coconut before. If you do not know, you will not think there is a very delicious juice inside of that coconut. Why? Because as you're looking at it on the outside, it looks just like anything else. Can anything good come come out of that? People do not think you are industrious because you are hidden in Christ Jesus. So, when you live, and we shall see this later in the book of Galatians, when you let Christ live, because you are hidden in him, all that is Christ will be attributed to you. Amen? Because you are found in him, and he is shining. So, it means you will be a partaker of the excellence of Christ. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Found inside, hidden. So, 
you are also a treasure and that is why you are covered that is why you are preserved how many of us preserve things we don't want you only preserve things that you want things that you want to keep for longer things that you want to use in the next time to come praise the lord hallelujah now you also because you are dear to god he has kept you he has protected you he has preserved you because he cares for you praise the lord now in these next minutes i want us to look at how jesus has preserved us how has jesus preserved us and we are going to look at four of them how Jesus has preserved us. Number one, by his life. By his life. And we are going to see in the book of John chapter one, the gospel according to Apostle John chapter one. And we shall start from verse 11. It says, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Who are those that are his own? The fellow Jews because they were tribesmen his fellow tribesmen. He came to them and they did not receive him. But what does he say in the next verse? But as many as received him, to them he gave the right. Other versions say power to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Friends, scripture says the right to become a child of God is only because you have received him. Only because you have believed him. Not because of anything that you have done. So friends, stop struggling to do something that you may feel like you are more of a child of God. Only receive his testimony for you. Only receive his assurance for you. Only receive what he has taught for you. Now, because he has made you his child, then it means you carry his identity. If it was a fleshly matter, they would take you for DNA and they take God for DNA and they would find that your genes match. Fizuri. But because it's not a fleshly matter, you have become one with him. So you can write and say, you now have the identity of God in you. Because you have become a child of God. How many of us are children of God? Then you carry the identity of God in you. Say amen. And because God is one, we are told that in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4, because God is one, our Lord is one, then it means the power that you have received is the power that I have received. The life that you have received is the life that I have received. You have all been given the right to become children of God so you are not less than your neighbor that is a believer in as far as being sons of God or children of God is concerned. You are not less than your neighbor. And so it means you are not that greater than your neighbor because you all have the same God. And that is where now it comes that we look at each other as sons of God before all of these other things that we may have, the responsibilities that you have in the world, maybe you are the CEO of such and such a company, before you look at all of those things, remember one thing, first and primarily, that that person has the same God like you are. So friends, you are not less than the believer next to you. Even as you're seated there. As far as being children of God is concerned, oh, you are all dear to God. You are all dear to God. No one is less dear to God than another. All of you. Venye mungu amenipenda, ndi amekupenda wewe. Paneswa sifiwe. The way he has loved me, he has loved you. The way he has loved your friend, he has loved you. And then you might ask questions. The only difference is how each one of us have yielded to his love. You yield to his love, you experience the results of that love. And that is why I encourage us, 
Always exercise yourself in these things. Always exercise yourselves in these things. Because therein is your life. Praise the Lord. So you now have the identity of God in you and you are not less than the believer next to you. In the book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. Scripture says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because the reason why you overcome is because he that is in you is greater than he who is where in the world. He that is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, he that is in you is the powerful one, the great one, and so because he has given you his life, then you are preserved. So the pressures of the world will not take you away because you are preserved by he that is greater. So when there is fear that comes, he tells you, you are of God, child. You have overcome those fears. You have overcome the false teachers because he's speaking about those. You have overcome them that come and take you away. Why? Because of him that is in you. Him that has given you his life. Him that has given you his identity. Praise the Lord. Friends, no matter what happens, I want you to always remind yourself by the word that you are of God. Say, I am of God. In the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, he says, I have been crucified with Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. He says, I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Where does Christ live? But then Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 has told us, seek those things which are above, where Christ is. But then Paul again is saying, because he's the same person that told the Colossians, eh? he's telling the Galatians, Christ lives in me. So then that makes you understand that above is not a place. Eh? So I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives where? Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise the Lord. When you know that you have Christ living in you and you know that he lives eternally, you know that things to do with you remaining untouched, remaining undisturbed, are sorted. It means then you will not worry about, oh, I am alone. Oh, I am without help. Oh, I am without assistance. No, Christ lives in you. Your abundance of supply. Praise the Lord. And now in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, we know that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Also note that you are one with the Lord. Friends, those of you that were here in first service, I told you that this scripture does not mean that you now have a oneness. Atimko na umoja. Mm -mm. Kukua na umoja ni tofauti na kukua kitu kimoja. Fine, you have a oneness, but are you one? So scripture is not saying that he who is joined to the Lord has oneness with him in the spirit. No. He says that person is one spirit with him. How many of us have been joined to the Lord? You are one spirit with the Lord. Now, do not fight with your mind to see how you are one spirit with him. The word has spoken. You are not stupid to believe because your mind is sharp and your mind is working. That is why when a lie is spoken, you won't believe it because it's a lie. But the truth, we believe. So, because you are one spirit with the Lord... It means it doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter how far you are. Oh, let me include this. Even in your shortcomings. Amen. Because where we started from, he said, no one will snatch them 
You know, the enemy wants to use so much your mistakes to make you feel like you are so far away from God. He says, not even that will snatch you away. Now, these things do not depend on our working. They depend on the knowledge and the testimony of God for us. I want us to grow in these things that the world will no longer press us and hold us at ransom because of the shortcomings of men. Amen? So it does, it does not matter where you go. It does not matter where you are. What matters is that Christ lives where? In you and you are one with him. Now that means that if no one can cast a disease on Jesus, then no one can cast a disease on you because you are one with Christ Jesus. Tell me, who can... Kuna mtu anaweza kumroga Yesu kweli. But you are one spirit with the Lord. Then it means wewe haurogwi. Let the people cause or do all their things that they want to do. <laughs> Tell them I am hidden with Christ in God. Let divinations come, you are hidden. Let all bad mouth things come, you are hidden. Only be aware of these truths in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In the book of John chapter 10 and verse 18, he starts in verse 17 by saying, the father loves me because I lay down my life and I take it again. Then in verse 18, no one takes it from me but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. What Jesus here is prophesying is that you know, something is going to happen hapo mbele, lakini musifikiria ya kwamba wameniua mimi. Hakuna mtu anaweza kuniua mimi. What I will do is I will give myself for your sake, but not that people will cause me to be extinct. You know what this means? It means you that is one spirit with the Lord, you can also not be killed. It doesn't matter even if they kill this body that is disappearing. No one can touch that life that God has given you. Because no one has control over it except the one that has given. If you've hidden something, people will come and they will search, but you alone know where you've hidden it. Unless you're not so good at hiding. But if you are, the way our God is, you cannot be reached. So no one can come and cause a disruption of the things that God has wrote in you because he has, he has put you where you cannot be reached as he's preserved. He has preserved you in that place that now everything that he will keep doing for you, no man will be able to stop it because you are already found right therein in the name which is of Jesus. Vanessa Sifiwe. Amen. So, because Jesus has said in verse 18, John chapter 10, that no one can take my life from me. No one can take that life from you. Praise the Lord. So, you have eternal life, not even your challenge, not even your mistakes, not even your failures, not even your rejection will be able to take that life away from you. You have it eternally. Why? Because it is eternally for you. You've been preserved eternally. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. In the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 28. Luke chapter 4 verse 28. For those of you that were here in first service, I told us to go back and read from verse 16. When Jesus entered the synagogue and then he read Isaiah chapter 61. Having read, he returned the book to the to the service leader, and then he, he preached for a while while he was seated, while he had gone to sit. He told them, these things have now been, have now come to pass before you. And so they started looking at him, na macho ile, tofauti, being like, okay, well, unajifanya, we ni nan, unajita nan. So scripture says in verse 28, so all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. 29. And rose up and thrust him out of the city. We are talking about Jesus. They rose up and thrust him 
out of the city, and they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built. What was the purpose of that? They wanted to throw him down over the cliff. They wanted to throw him down over the cliff. We are speaking about Jesus. Verse 30. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. Because he has life in him, no one could be able to make him disappear. So he was able to just walk away from danger. I want to tell you that because you are one spirit with him, even you, you are able to walk away simply from danger. My prayer is that you might be tuned well enough that when the Holy Spirit causes you to see danger, you have the ability to walk away and nothing will at any one time do harm to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another example is in the book of John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And we shall start from verse what? Let's start from verse 50. Eight. You know, in the entirety of this, jo- of this John chapter 8 specifically, Jesus was speaking to non-believers and many of the Pharisees were fighting him and yet he kept preaching the truth. And that is why saints, when challenges come, keep preaching the truth. Keep teaching the truth. So in verse 58, Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Because they were telling him, you know, for us we are of, of Father Abraham. And you know, we were not born like in the, we are not sinners like others are. For us we are perfect. And so we regard the testimony of Abraham. He tells them, Tulieni Kwanza. The Abraham you are speaking about is because I am. Before he was, I am. And so the reaction is always, hey, verse 59. Then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. So we see here that hiding preserves men from the afflictions of the enemy. Jesus had the ability in himself to hide. You don't have that ability. And that is why he has hidden you. Because if, if you were to do it by yourself, ungepatikana tu, kiraisi sana. So, Jesus, as he was able, when trouble is there, and he goes away scot-free. Friends, that is the life he has given you. And that is why he has preserved you eternally. Say, I am preserved. And so, the life that he has given you causes you to walk exactly as he walked. We have seen in John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, We've seen in John chapter 8, we've seen even in Luke chapter 4 that you are preserved. We've seen in uh, Galatians chapter 2 as well that you are preserved. That is number one, that you are preserved by his life. Number two, you are preserved by his power, by his power. In the book of Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, this is a very common verse. Chapter 10, verse 19. Scripture says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents. That authority is power. Amen. And scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I want you to note that last statement, that nothing shall By any means. Meaning, the world will try to forge things and do things and do this and plan this and plan the other. But all those means will not hurt you. Why? Because you are found in Christ Jesus. So let if those fears are coming, be persuaded that they have come because they are going. They will not hurt you. Be persuaded that they have come because they are disappearing. They will not hurt you. Because you remain in the protection of the Lord, preserved eternally. It's important for a believer to know their location. And I have said it is not a physical location. 
It is important for a believer to always be aware that here is where I am found. Because that is where life is. So nothing shall by any means hurt you. And so you do not fear. Neither do you let those fears to keep you down. You soar above always. This year, we said we want to see men and women that soar above. Not just in speech, but even in demonstration of the realities of God physically. Amen? Number three, you've been preserved by his death. Because we know that the wages of sin is death. But why did Jesus die? Because of our sins. So what does it mean? You escaped death the moment Jesus died. So you were preserved because he was dying. Hallelujah. That is why we celebrate that Jesus died. For our sins. Not, because, not just because he died. Because at his death, that is where we know that, oh, I am alive. I am preserved. I am protected. I am, I am forgiven. Praise the Lord. So when he was dying, it was that you may be preserved. That is why for as many as received him, even acknowledging that he died, life. And then lastly, you are preserved by his resurrection. You are preserved by his resurrection. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1 will start from verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Next verse. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? You preserve because there is power toward you who believe. So that power is not to anything, but that power is toward you who believe. How many of us believe? There is power toward you. So he says that power is not according to how much you have prayed. That power is not according to how much you have given. That power is not according to how many Sunday services you've come to. That power is according to the working of his mighty power. What is that mighty power that he's speaking about? Next verse. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Oh, so the power toward us is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. The stone that many soldiers had to push to cover the tomb could not hold itself there. No one moved it. So much that the soldiers themselves were in fear. The power that must have taken this stone away must be a power greater than us. But beloved, that power is resident in you. So he says, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. He has said you are, he has sat you far above. That is why where we started from is telling you, focus on those things which are above. Friends, the pressures of the world will never cease. So if an individual is being pushed by the pressures of the world, even your economic life is built according to the pressures of the world. I want also to be like this. I want also to be like this. You want too much. Not I'm saying that the things that you want are too much. Eh? But your wanting is too much. Because you've forgotten that you are from above. So those earthly affairs, those earthly things, that is why they are earthly. They shouldn't bring you down. They shouldn't cause you to be cast down in any way. Praise the Lord. Why? Because you are above. Because you are from above. So you let yourself think in the mind which is of God. You let yourself think like how God has loved you. 
You let yourself think like how God has preserved you. You let yourself think in the power that raised Jesus from the dead. And then you know that that power is at work in you. It means you're not ordinary. That is why because you are not ordinary, you had to be hidden somewhere. That is why the toughest dogs, at home we have dogs, they are hidden Otherwise, zikiwa, zikiwa chiliwa. Kutawaka moto. That is why you are hidden in him then he teaches you to manifest. He teaches you to manifest. Because what is in you is too big for this world to contain. That is why he leads you into all the truth by his spirit. Praise the Lord. Friends, you are not ordinary. You do not have, you, you, you're not trying to find or, or to say, okay, how can I? Mm-mm. You have it all. Because God has given you in the name of Jesus. So, let yourself think in the way that you have been preserved. One, by the life of Jesus. We've seen his life. And he has given that life to you because he has made you one spirit with him. We've seen that in 1 Corinthians 6, 17. That is, that he's joined to the Lord, is one spirit with him. So you are one spirit with the Lord Jesus. Number two, we have said that you are preserved by his power. In Luke 10, 19, he has said that, Behold, I give you, I've given you authority to trample over all serpents. He has given you that authority. You are able to trample over them all. And number three, we have said that he has preserved you by his death because he was dying because of your sins. So it means the the reason for you to die doesn't exist anymore. I will live, I will not die. I will declare and lift you up. Friends, you live forever. Number four, I have said that you are preserved by his death. Resurrection. So, let yourself think this way. Always meditate on these things and be perfected in that reality. Praise the Lord. And also, when you think like that, then your speech will start to show like that. You won't be the kind that is saying, is telling God to remember you. Because there is no day he has forgotten you. Praise the Lord. In any case, he has accomplished all that pertains unto life and godliness in you. That is what Peter says. He says he has given you all things that pertain unto life and unto godliness. So, you let yourself to think in this way. You let your speech to be shaped by this understanding that you belong to God. And then your actions will also follow suit. The challenge with many believers is they want to start with their actions. That is your, that is carnal mentality. But if you start because the word has said, what is the testimony about you? And then that testimony pushes you to manifest the greatness of God in you. Then you shine forth in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let me end with these verses and then we shall be out of here. The book of John chapter 6. Hallelujah. The book of John chapter 6. And let me start from verse 54. John chapter 6 verse 54. He says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink. Indeed, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living father sent me and I live because of the father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. I want you to pay attention to that last verse. He says, as the living father sent me and I live because of the father, so what is, what is the primary enablement for Jesus to live? The Father. 
Then he says, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. How many of us feed of Jesus? As in learn from Jesus. Then he says, you will, you will live because of him. His meaning, you will live because of the word that you have received. That is what Jesus told the serpent in Matthew chapter 4. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, that statement does not put away food from the equation. Actually, that statement means food is important because it sustains a certain part. But that statement is important because it says, man shall not live by bread alone. So it means there is a, an aspect of life which is sustained by bread, but not bread alone. But when he reaches to every word, he says, but by every word. So it means every word that comes from the mouth of God is able to sustain you independently. And so the spirit person that you are is sustained independently and exclusively by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So he says in that, in, in that portion from verse 54 to 57 that you are preserved, that you are satisfied, and you live because he lives. Praise the Lord. Friends, you live only because he lives. You are preserved and covered therein. No harm can reach you. He says nothing by any means. Luke 10, 19. Nothing by any means shall do you any harm. So stop fearing. Stop fearing. Stop fearing. Hallelujah. Because you are preserved. And so the powers of darkness cannot reach you. The pressures of the world cannot bring you down. Is it lack? Is it failure? Is it rejection? Is it disappointment? Nothing can reach you. Start up, I want to pray for you on your feet. That if there was anything that was causing you to think that you are without the greatness of the Lord, it doesn't matter. Start to look at it like it doesn't matter anymore. Start to look at it like it doesn't matter anymore because you are protected. Because you are protected. Because you are loved. Because you are provided for. Because the Spirit of God has preserved you in the name of Jesus. You are provided for forever in the name of Jesus. You are provided for in the name of Jesus. Come on, declare that you are preserved. Declare that you are preserved. Declare that you are preserved. And if anything was pressuring you, speak to yourself and encourage yourself in the word and say, I am preserved in God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. My preservation. Thank you, Jesus. My preservation. Oh, Jesus, you are my preservation. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And if anyone thought they were without strength, right now I declare that you are strong in the Lord. You are strong in the Lord. You are powerful and victorious in the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Receive strength even by the Spirit of God that you have overcome. Receive assurance that you will not be snatched out. If that situation thought, thought it was, if you thought you were being swallowed up, you are not. You are protected. Hey, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. He is good. In Jesus' name. Amen.